Hello and welcome to another mini episode of The Other Side of Sales. I am super excited today because we are joined by Ryan Woodard, who is joining us as one of our new co-hosts. So Ryan, for those people who aren't familiar with you, tell them a little bit about yourself and your sales journey. Yeah. Uh, first, I am super humbled and excited to uh, go down this new journey uh, with you. But uh, a little bit about myself. I'm from Wichita, Kansas. You can see a little rock chalk Jayhawk behind me if I raise my camera. Uh, that's where I went to school at. Uh, I started in sales uh, really as a young person. I was always kind of the, the guy that everybody asked about, uh, you know, decisions on electronics. So I've always been into computers and uh, video you know, games. And you're not just into computers. You like build. You're the one person I found who like actually built high-end computers. Yeah, uh, actually, recently I just got two uh, RTX twenty eighty supers from Lenovo. So shout out to their customer service for making that happen for me. Uh, if you know anything about the current microprocessor shortage, it is a struggle out here. I I know uh, I know enough to know that I recognize those terms because my husband just rebuilt his computer, but he he rebuilt his with liquid cooling, so he's yeah. he got super fancy this time around. But it's it's very exciting. So you, and you kind of were the guy for everyone went to and stuff and you turned that into kind of your first sales position, right? Yeah. Um, I, at the time I was done with college, uh, the recession hit kind of hard. I was in Indianapolis. I thought that if I did like a year of operating room, sterile processing, I could, uh, take that year of OR experience and go into like medical device sales. They were really looking for somebody that had sales uh, a sales background and sales experience. Well, uh, I was just out of college. Uh, I had some leadership uh, examples where, you know, I did, uh, I was the uh, sophomore uh, representative for the AICHE, so the American Institute for Chemical Engineers, when I was in the School of Engineering at Kansas. Uh, but that just wasn't enough to get me in the front door. So uh, I started selling at HH Gregg, which was a, uh, it's a regional retailer that I think now has been transformed into like an e-commerce shop, but uh, they went under, uh, I think a year after I actually left there, but I was selling TVs, computers, electronics, uh, appliances, furniture. Uh, and then you, whole... made, you made a huge jump. You jumped from like household stuff to industrial equipment. Yeah, uh, after I kind of saw the the writing on the wall there, uh, I made a, a change and started selling uh, big, heavy equipment, uh, like your excavators, wheel loaders, uh, material handlers. All uh, the fun things we played with as kids. Yeah, it was really like being a kid again, uh, riding in some of those huge pieces of equipment, uh, just seeing kind of the the craftsmanship that, that went into it. Uh, was was really awesome. Got to visit some really cool uh, manufacturing plants down in like Georgia for uh, Kawasaki, uh, which now is owned by Hitachi. Uh, they also featured me in their Focus magazine for salesmanship. Uh, so that was a huge honor to be uh, recognized in that capacity, uh, something I'm very proud of. Uh, and then uh, I made a switch back into uh, electronics and a, kind of a retail uh, a little bit, but on the other side, uh, I was doing B2B MarTech. Uh, so their uh, niche with this company was uh, retail and e-commerce. So it was, uh, they were acquired by SAP uh, late last year. And uh, then most recently in March, last month, I made the switch to be a BDR manager uh, for a fast-paced startup uh, in the contact center as a service and unified communications as a service uh, space. The company's called Edify, so I'm super excited to lead this team and build this out and uh, humbled to be a part of what we're doing here with uh, the other side of sales as well. No, it's super exciting. And I, it's interesting, our kind of our backstory, I'd like to ask and ask, you know, how kind of, how did you connect with the other side of sales? And I believe we connected because you, um, one of the co-founders of Sales for the Culture, which was formerly Sales Brotherhood and Sisterhood, which is a networking group, if you're not familiar with it, for Black Sales Pros. Um, yeah. which uh, is fantastic. And we actually went through and we interviewed, you were actually the last interview I did in the States before I moved to the Netherlands. And you impressed us so much that when it came time to look for some new co-hosts, I was like, oh, I'm just not going to release that episode. Maybe we'll do it as a bonus at some point. But I was like, yeah. nope, I'm snagging, I'm snagging him as a co-host. So we'll kind of 
skip that funness. But why don't you quick tell people about sales for the culture? Yeah, before I go into that, I'll tell you something that's crazy that I didn't really, I don't think I shared with you. My dad was in radio uh, in Kansas. So it's kind of like, feels like a, you know, like- Oh, this yeah, is in your blood. Yeah, and he doesn't, I haven't told him about this yet. So I know he's going to be like, all super proud. And, oh yeah, you know, making my, my, my parents proud, something that- uh, I think you were doing that already. I try. Sometimes I've, I've come up short, but hey, we're human. That's what we, uh, you know, I've got great parents that have taught me uh, to, you know, have ownership and hold yourself accountable. And, you know, you can, people will forgive you for missteps. So, uh, but sales for the culture, uh, I actually met Morgan because Eddie Marsis, which was the company I worked at previously, we solicited him for uh, help kind of, um, with just outreach, what the current state of outreach was. And all of our team went to like Dollar Tree and got fedora hats. Cause if people remember like the OG Morgan Ingram. Oh yeah. Or, or, yeah. Morgan, Morgan's hack game was on, was I, I think, I think what did the kids still say on fleek? Is, is, is that no longer a thing? I don't know. I just turned 35. So now I'm so out of touch with what the kids say. They're yeah. We're just, yeah. We, we, uh, we, we still make, we, we make jokes referencing the late nineties and people are like, I wasn't born yet right and then you want to die yeah right. and so um so sales for the got, culture got connected with with morgan through um you know just uh our, our team reaching out to him uh i kind of busted his balls just being you know brothers and how black guys are and it's like oh dude another, another black guy here and people at my job they couldn't believe that i was busting his chops about haircuts and uh especially when if you look at mine I need, I got some work to do. Uh, so that turned into Morgan and I just having like more conversations and dialogue. Uh, we, you know, have built a friendship and he asked me to kind of own uh, the SDR portion of the sales uh, for, for, for the culture uh, starting out. And um, it didn't really go. I mean, we had some traction, but we didn't really have like a real concrete vision until uh, our new like kind of fearless leader right now Jacob uh I freaking am gonna butcher his last name because I don't ever say it enough but um is it Gaver Gaverwald I don't know forgive me Jacob but uh we'll put the LinkedIn link and hope he's got the pronunciation little thing at the end so our yeah, listeners can yeah. go hear it firsthand but so he's given us just like a huge direction uh all of our channels are popping we're given you know, like one-on-one -on -one type advice to SDRs, people that aren't in sales, uh, that are just interested in maybe getting into tech sales. There's a whole channel uh, with a bunch so of resources. There's where can eight. people find sales for the culture? There's a LinkedIn uh, page that you can find information on. You can feel free to slide in my DMs if you're uh, out there and you need some, some uh, camaraderie uh, in your life and as far as like sales goes and uh, you know, be happy to, to get you an invite there to the Slack channel and kind of get all these resources over to people. Fantastic. So I want to run through a couple of these kind of quick here, give you, give us, put you on the spot. When was a time when you felt like you were an other in sales? Yeah, there was, man, it's so hard to like pinpoint one that I really want to, you know, sometimes you tend to want to forget some of these traumatic experiences so um there was one time where there i was at a sales um like a sales kickoff where where there was like a training and all the sales team went out to dinner and uh it was right kind of during 2016 and uh just got kind of like pressured a little bit to vote a certain way because the industry we served kind of depended on it and um you know just kind of didn't feel like that a that was very appropriate and b um you know being one of the only people uh of a different ethnicity there at that table uh definitely felt like another and like i didn't belong so it was it was a little odd in that sense yeah, that's rough uh and you know it's kind of being told like if you have a differing political opinion don't 
talk about it or share it with anybody because then they're not going to want to do business with you. And I honestly found that to be quite the opposite. Most of the time, people, I wasn't the one that was engaging in these conversations. Yeah. They, you know, my clients would, oh man, you, you know, black dudes selling heavy equipment or, you know, and they yeah. would just ask questions. And so I'm the type of person that like, yeah, if we have a civil dialogue back and forth. You know, if it's something I don't didn't want to get into, most of them I just tell them like, yeah, I don't really want to talk about that, man. Can we maybe visit that another time? And most people are like pretty respectful and will, especially if they know you're trying to provide a service, regardless if they're a big city playboy or a rural city. Absolutely. You know, people uh, are people, people, people try to be good people in exactly. general. And um, always, there's always an exception that proves the rule. All right, wrapping this up. What is the first thing you're going to do when COVID is over and life goes back to quote unquote normal? I'm going to like a beach, uh, where, you know, preferably out of the country, uh, you know, one of those like sandals destination with my fiance, soon to be wife, uh, where we don't have like any responsibilities yeah because you're like t-minus 50 days ish last time i checked it was 53 days and i think that was two days ago so i think it might be 51 june 4th so it's coming up it's coming up fast uh but most of the details are done she's actually in vegas uh for her bachelorette party so fancy yeah there's a lot of trust there obviously if we're send into well, Vegas. Well, if you're getting married, there's a lot of trust there. Yeah. So. And we've been together for about five years. So it's been, uh, we know each other quite well by this point. And One would hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before we made this leap of faith. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Ryan. And thank you so much for joining us on this journey. I'm so excited to see what we're going to accomplish together. We'll put all the details on sales for the culture and Ryan in the, uh, in the show notes. Make sure you connect with him and stay tuned. And thank you for listening to another episode of The Other Side of Sales.